Hello and welcome to another video from ECF Composites, the UK's favourite supplier of fibreglass and composite materials. In this video, we're going to show you how we made this plaster head and shoulders bust from a live model, using alginate, plaster bandage and casting plaster. For this project, we used approximately 30 to 40 metres of bandage, 2 kilograms of alginate and 15 kilograms of casting plaster. All of these materials are available from our website at ecfibreglasssupplies.co.uk. Please see the description below for the various steps and so you can skip around to find the part you need. Let's get started. Step 1. Preparation. The subject needs to wear a silicon or latex bald cap, a swimming hat or in this case we've just used shrink wrap to cover the hair. Once the hair is covered, apply Vaseline to the eyebrows and any other hairs that need to be covered. Alginate will usually come away easily from the odd hair but clumps of hair will cause the alginate to stick and it'll pull lumps from the mould. Also plug the ears with cotton wool or earplugs. Step 2. Mix and apply alginate. Start by mixing the alginate at approximately one part powder to three to four parts water. Mix with a paddle mixer on a drill to help reduce any lumps. Apply from the back of the head, making sure you get the alginate behind the ears and into any crevices. If you don't fill these voids, they'll become air pockets and that'll cause lumps on your final cast. Most air puppets tend to happen around the ears, eyes, around the nose and where the jaw and neck meet so be sure to take extra time in those areas working out the air pockets. Nostrils should have straws inserted to allow the subject to breathe, although in this case we've done this type of cast many times and we're being extra careful to avoid the alginate being placed over or near the nostrils and plus the subject was happy not to have straws inserted. It's a good idea to have a third person watching and they can keep the nostrils clear too. Step 3. Creating a partition. Once the alginate's cured, the plaster bandage can be applied. This will create a supporting shell for the alginate mould. Again, work from the back first, using folded or wrapped plaster bandage to create a wall running along the top of the shoulders, over the head and at the back of the ears. This will create a high partition wall. Then apply more bandages all over the back of the head. Mix up some plaster, fine casting powder with water to form a paste and use this to make a good square wall and smooth off the plaster shell. Step 4. Applying plaster bandage. It's highly important that you don't forget to apply a good smear of Vaseline along the partition wall of the plaster shell. And this is to ensure a good release of the two shell halves. Repeat as previously with the bandage and plaster again, making sure the nostrils are clear at all times. Step 5. Removing the mould from the subject. Once hardened, usually after around 30 minutes after the last bandage has been applied, depending on the working temperature, you can then start to remove the mould. It's a good idea to remove the back of the shell first, making sure that the front shell stays in place. Then, carefully cut a Y shape in the alginate at the back of the head. Don't use anything sharp or with a point to cut. The alginate will easily cut with children's safety scissors, butt knife, something like that. The cut should be big enough to allow the subject's head to fit through. Then, lower the subject to the floor and have them kneel forward holding the front shell in place so it doesn't fall to the floor. Carefully get the subject to remove their head whilst moving the muscles in their face to help with the release from the alginate. Once they're out of the mould, carefully replace the back shell and secure the two halves by wrapping the outer shell with duct tape. Pop the mould into a bucket for support. Ensure all the seam lines where you cut the Y are joined together perfectly and are level. And also make sure that you plug the nostril holes from the outside with plasticine or clay, otherwise your plaster cast mixture will spill out of these holes. Step 6. Filling the mould with plaster. Once the mould is ready, mix up a batch of fine casting plaster and water and pour into your mould. Swirl the plaster around and work it in place to ensure there's no trapped air pockets. 
Plaster can get hot when curing, so make sure you don't leave your hand in curing plaster. You can reinforce the shoulder areas with bandage also. Step 7. Cure and demould. Leave to cure. For best results, leave it overnight, as taking it out too early could result in parts snapping off due to the plaster being too soft. When removing the alginate, be careful around the ears, as these will be the weakest areas. You might find that, no matter how careful you've been to remove trapped air during the process, that the cast still has unwanted lumps, etc. These can usually be picked off, or in worst cases, can be filed off and the area can be sculpted. In a forthcoming video, we'll be making a silicon mould from this plaster head and reproducing the head in fibreglass. So please do click on like and subscribe and click the bell icon if you'd like to be informed when we make our next video. We'll try and answer any questions in the comments below or contact us via our website. Thanks for watching.